We've been seeing these all over when I was driving from the airport. Yeah. Yeah. We got a cameraman too if y'all want us to. I don't know if y'all want him to record anything. He good, he good. Yeah. Yeah. More and more legal dispensaries open their doors here in Houston. So if you get pulled over at Ace House, one of the J, what are they going to do? Well, he's telling you something to give you the paperwork with it. So if you do get pulled over, he has the paperwork like this. You can't confiscate this. This is THCA, blah, blah, blah. blah. So did you know that basically in Texas, weed is legal? Yeah. Our bill will finally legalize hemp and remove it from the list of control. So the state has been known for its harsh drug policies for years, but a new federal law, the 2018 Farm Bill, and I've covered it in my THCA documentary, go check that out. Well, let's turn tides. And we are going to be talking about one of the most successful hemp businessmen in the Lone Star State. So yeah, I'd say after like six, six, seven months that we put up our third fourth store, and then it's, ever since then, it's been every month we put up a store since then. If you make that move fast before one of these other fuckers dudes do it, it's gonna be big, bro. But let's start at the beginning. So in the bustling city of Houston, Texas, the THC Club thrives, a pioneering brand in the hemp world with 18 stores across the city. The THC Club has redefined the experience of this plant in Texas. I want to legally, uh -huh. but what do you have here in Houston? You call this a dispensary, right? Yeah, this is a dispensary. Offering a legal and high quality alternative to traditional markets. At the helm of this company is Raw. <laughs> Man, I be having a lot of ideas. Some of them work, some of them don't work. Oh man, if, if they if I if I stopped every time they said ban it, I, I wouldn't have a business. You know what I'm saying? A visionary entrepreneur whose journey is as unique as the products his stores offer. So Ra's story begins in the Virgin Islands, where he was raised in a community deeply rooted in the Rastafarian culture. In this environment, the plant right is more than just a plant. Weed was much more than just a plant. It was a craft passed down through generations. From a young age, Ra was immersed in this world, learning the nuances of little bits of cultivation and the importance of quality. So, you know, cannabis was always like a trade. You know what I mean? Just like a painter or a mechanic or you, you grow. The same thing. Always just wanted that, that good pack. You know what I mean? And made my way to Cali eventually. And... Uh, Growing, you know, I, mean, I have family up in Mendo, so connected with those people up there. And Ross' time in California allowed him to hone his skills and connect with a network of growers and enthusiasts who shared his passion. However, when the pandemic struck, California's industry faced unprecedented challenges. And seeing an opportunity, Ross set his sights on Houston, where the industry was growing rapidly. And this is a key point, folks. Move to somewhere where there's opportunity. You know, it doesn't have to be forever, but it can make all the difference. And I've shown that in other videos, other stories from other entrepreneurs. In Houston, Rock quickly realized there was a significant gap in the market. Unlike California, where dispensaries were plentiful, Houston lacked real weed stores, right? Because the state hadn't legalized, but the federal government had unofficially kind of. But most products were sold in smoke shops alongside vape sticks, lacking the authenticity and quality that true enthusiasts craved. Ross saw the need for a dedicated space where consumers would experience the plant in a way that was both legal and true to its roots. Navigating the hemp laws in an emerging market can be extremely difficult as an entrepreneur. What Ra accomplished in Houston is impressive to say the least. So in addition, Ra recognized the importance of integrating medical and wellness aspects into the business. While the THCA products offered at the club are legal and accessible, there is still significant benefit to having a medical recommendation for weed use. I don't think people should just forget about the medical, um, the medical side from it. You know what I'm saying? That was like, that's like a big part. That's like protection. You know what I'm saying? Like, why wouldn't we take advantage of that? Even though like it's not required and they're going recreational and stuff. But if we do use it for medical purposes, like I, I think we should still, pro people should still go a lot, go that route. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's, it's, you're just more protected, and I just feel better having a medical card, you know what I'm saying, than having to tell. Like, I'm here in, in the condo, and they, they tell me anything about, I'm not smoking this shit to get high. This is my, this is my medicine, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
By combining the legal framework of THCA with medical expertise, the THC Club has positioned itself as a leader in the wellness space, offering products that are both compliant and beneficial for a wide range of customers. Now, before we learn more about the THC Club, understanding the legal landscape of THCA and hemp in the United States is crucial to appreciating the significance of their operations. The 2018 Farm Bill, a landmark piece of legislation that legalized hemp at the federal level. According to the Farm Bill, hemp is defined as weed with less than 0.3% Delta 9 THC by dry weight, distinguishing it from marijuana, which remains illegal under federal law. Now, THCA itself is a non-psychoactive precursor to THC, the compound responsible for the psychoactive effects of weed. When THCA is heated through smoking, vaping, or cooking, it converts to Delta 9, what we think of as traditional marijuana. And this chemical distinction has allowed businesses like THC Club to operate legally within the framework of federal law by ensuring that their products remain compliant with the 0.3% Delta 9 THC limit. Now, Ra and his team have been able to provide high quality products that offer the same experience as traditional weed. It's literally the, pretty much the exact same thing, but with the legal boundaries set by the Farm Bill. As all great entrepreneurs know, all this could never be accomplished alone. Building the THC Club from the ground up required more than just vision. It required a dedicated team. I did, at first, I just, whoever was available, you know what I'm saying? Like, whoever was available, whoever was around, just putting everybody, everybody who was around me to work, basically, like. Hey, yep, I've been in Houston since, like, 2018. Uh, how old are you? I'm 34. Uh, uh, opened up a location. On I see that. Something, man. That's what's up. Man, me just want to be a part of something. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, absolutely. Kind of. I want to open up a business and I found a great partner to do it with. Yeah, I knew we knew each other for a few years now. Yeah. So when I finally ran back into him in Houston, I seen this is what he was doing. He was like, I just was, you know, waiting for my time to be for him uh, let me be a part of it, and he did. And just finding the right people that I had around me. But yeah, but once you once once you get it locked in, that's it. You know what I'm saying? You can move on to the next. And that, that's key, being able to put somebody in position that could do the job and then move on to the next. So, you know what I'm saying? Try not to waste too much manpower, too much hours on one job. Like, all that is key. Or else you're gonna have 10 people making pre-rolls. Now, however, the legal landscape has been anything but straightforward. The 2018 Farm Bill created a loophole, but the interpretation and enforcement of this law have been varied significantly from state to state. Some states embraced the opportunity establishing regulations that allowed businesses, but others, however, implemented stricter controls seeking to keep hemp illegal. In states like Texas, the response to the Farm Bill was mixed. On one hand, the state allowed for the legal sale of hemp-derived products, including THCA, as long as they met the federal criteria. On the other hand, the state's stringent laws and conservative stance on weed created a challenging environment for businesses. Despite these obstacles, Raw and his team have navigated the complexities of the law, ensuring that their products remain compliant while still offering the high-quality experience that consumers expect. Oh man, if, if, they, if, I, if I stopped every time they said ban it, I, I wouldn't have a business, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. It's, they, they haven't banned it, but they keep saying they're changing, they're going to amend this and that. So we're waiting to see. But until then, I mean, I'm going to just keep doing what I do. And then when that happens, we'll, you know what I'm saying, we'll go back to the drawing board and, you know what I'm saying, like, figure out what other products, we, what other products are, are available and then we'll, we'll perfect those, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, not, I'm not too concerned. A lot of people are, oh my God, I'm not concerned, you know what I'm saying? Like, Whatever happens, we'll still we'll roll with it and we'll still be here. I'm not too concerned. So in Texas, the regulatory framework for hemp and THCA is overseen by the Texas Department of Agriculture. Business that wish to cultivate, process, and sell hemp products must obtain the appropriate licenses from the TDA, which involves a rigorous application process and adherence to strict protocols. Under Texas law, all hemp products must be tested to ensure they contain no more than 0.3% Delta 9 THC, and this testing must be conducted by an independent third-party laboratory. And the results must be provided to both the TDA and consumers in the form of a Certificate of Analysis, or a COA. And this ensures that all products sold in Texas are not only legal, but also safe and of high quality. And the licensing process in Texas also includes provisions for the inspection of hemp cultivation and processing facilities, ensuring that all operations meet the state standard for safety and compliance. For the THC Club, this has meant maintaining meticulous records and investing in the infrastructure needed to meet these stringent requirements. The club's success in navigating the regulatory environment is a testament to Raw's commitment to doing things the right way, setting a standard for the industry in Texas. You know what I mean? Don't, don't make this shit hot. Like, you know what I'm saying? Do it the right way. 
a lot of them are just opening up shop and then they just got their their friends coming through and it's, you know what I'm saying? I, I, it's like, you could have did this at home, but whatever. Get real products, invest your money and and like, you know what I'm saying? And real marketing and real products, do it the right way. Make sure all your products are tested, come with COAs, all that good stuff. Get it from licensed farmers, you know? So Texas setting up an actual regulatory framework for hemp comes as a surprise to many people because for decades, weed was not only illegal in Texas, but also heavily stigmatized, particularly in more conservative rural areas of the state. And the harsh penalties of possession created the environment of fear and secrecy from those who used or supported the plant. In many parts of Texas, especially in smaller towns, this stigma still persists. Weed is often viewed through the lens of criminality and moral decay, making it difficult for many to openly support its uses, or at least that was in the past. However, in the larger cities like Houston and Austin, the social climate is far different, and these urban centers have become more progressive in their views on weed, driven by a younger, more diverse population with the influence of national trends. In Austin, for instance, the city has taken a step to decriminalize weed, reflecting on the growing acceptance of the plant as part of the broader cultural and wellness landscape. Houston has also been seeing a shift in attitudes. While the stigma hasn't completely disappeared, there is a much greater openness to weed, particularly for products like THCA becoming widely available, which is kind of regular weed. And see, this is where the THC club has played a significant role in challenging those outdated perceptions, providing a legal and safe environment for weed enthusiasts to explore and enjoy the plant. By offering high quality products and creating a community around weed, the THC club is helping to normalize its use, particularly in areas where the stigma has been slow to fade. And this cultural shift is crucial, not only for the acceptance of weed in Texas, but also for the broader movement towards legalization and decriminalization. Personally, how did I end up meeting Raw? How did I find out about the THC Club? Well, I was visiting my best friend Zenzo down in Houston. And anyways, I find, you know, this THC Club and me and my buddy end up going over there. And I'm like, oh, this is crazy. I ended up talking to the staff, talked my way into the back, then eventually, you know, set up an interview with Raw. This is almost two years ago at this point, I think in the back of their store the next day. And so I came and did a quick interview. And then, um, you know, I kind of stashed that interview in my files and would later come back to it. And then one day I see, you know, about a year later, a clip of Ra on the news. It's out uh, that you sell here. So show us some of these products. Yeah, so we have- And I was like, oh my God. And so I tapped back in with him. And so since I had first met him, he's expanded massively. He's brought on a bunch of new partners and it's really dope to see. So, you know, that's, that's kind of my intro to meeting raw and the homies over at the THC club. But let's go back from the traditional to the legal market. So in the early days of the THC club, these social stigmas created major challenges, including finding landlords willing to lease space for a dispensary. Right. Um, the first store convincing is down there by NRG off of 610, like um, close to the medical center in Houston. That one, we, um, we knew the landlord personally, so we just talked to him and and showed him that, that we were ready. He believed in us. And then it was, the second one wasn't hard because he had um, he had other other storefronts available. So once we showed him we could handle the first one, he, he hit me up and told me he had other storefronts that, that were available. Ra understood the importance of surrounding himself with individuals who were not only skilled, but also committed to the mission. Many of the people who joined him were individuals he had worked with in other capacities, united by a shared goal of bringing quality flour to Houston. And together, they've navigated the challenges of opening multiple stores in a city where the laws were still evolving. THC lean, that, that was a no-brainer, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, that was a no-brainer. And then collabing with, with um, local artists in the city, giving them their own products, like, you know what I'm saying? And not only artists, but like other like popping clubs and like car washes, whatever, just tapping in and giving them their own product. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's just simple as a, their own pre-roll or the, you know what I'm saying? Making them their own edible. You know what I mean? So that's, yeah. And I feel like that that's like our strong point that other dispensaries and other smoke shops and shit like that, they can't, they can't do that. They can't just whip up a product and customize a product for somebody. They just gotta buy what the wholesaler has. You know what I'm saying? So we do a lot of that and I feel like that's, that's one of our strong points is being able to collab and make what we want to make because we manufacture our own, our own products. And these collaborations have not only elevated the brand, but have also strengthened its ties to the community, making the THC Club a beloved institution in Houston. Whether it's through hosting events like tattoo parties or collaborating with local influencers, the THC Club is deeply embedded in the cultural fabric of the city. 
And Raw has even brought some of the biggest names in the industry to the city, including Burner, the CEO of Cookies. Yeah. I've been seeing these all over when I was driving from the airport. Yeah, yeah. Man, my boys can't do, man. They next. Right, right. Hey, Saturday. Yeah, I get my right. right. owner of the AC Club, baby. How many other people are doing what you guys are doing right now? There's a lot of them. They popping up every day, but they they don't know the program. They don't know what they're doing at all. You know what I'm saying? They just popping up. We'll give you the game on how to design that bitch. Make sure you have. If you're especially too, the reason why Blue Tank do that. If you're a flagship, but you, you make that move fast before one of these other fuckers do is do it. So, in conclusion, Raw's journey from the Virgin Islands to the CEO of Texas's most successful weed businesses is a story of resilience, innovation, and community building. Through the THC Club, he has not only provided a legal and high-quality alternative to traditional weed, but also played a key role in changing perceptions of the plant in Texas. As more states embrace hemp-derived products and the federal government continues to reevaluate its stance on weed, the THC Club's journey offers valuable insight into the future of the industry. For Ra and his team, the journey is far from over, with plans to continue expansion and commitment to excellence. The THC Club is set to remain a leader in the hemp world for years to come. Anyways, guys, this is LMC, signing out.